What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the 2023 Daytona 500 entry list. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Let's begin by talking about the one car for Trackhouse Racing. This is once going to be driven by Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain in 2022 had a very strong season, scoring two victories, and also is really strong at the super speedway tracks. Fortune crashed out in the 2022 edition of the Daytona 500 with how aggressive and really fast he is at these super speedway tracks. I expect Ross Chastain to be a threat, and I think he'll have a really good chance to win the 2023 Daytona 500. Up next, talk about the two car for Team Penske. This will be driven by defending Daytona 500 winner Austin Center. Austin Center, of course, who won the 2022 Daytona 500. Looks go back to back in this year's Daytona 500. Austin Center gets a really strong super speed racer, so you know he's going to be really, really fast. That two car is going to show a lot of great pace and a lot of great speed, and I expect Austin Center to be extremely quick and fast in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, talk about the three car for Rich Schultz Racing. This one's going to be driven by Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon, the 2018 Daytona 500 winner, looks to have a very good season in 2023 with the addition of his new teammate, who will be looking to win his second Daytona 500. With the great additions in the good-looking car, he expected to have a really good run. I think Austin Dillon will be a threat to win the 2023 Daytona 500 as he's a really strong super speedway racer. Up next, how about the four car for Stuart Haas Racing? This one once going to be driven for by Kevin Harvey. Kevin Harvey, of course, 2007 Daytona 500 winner, will also be in his final Daytona 500 2023 before he jumps up to the Fox Sports booth in 2024. Kevin Harvick is a really solid super speed racer, so he's going to probably be a threat to win the 2023 Daytona 500, especially if he's still in contention at the end of the race. So I expect Kevin Harvick to be a threat. I think that number four car is going to be really strong in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, time to talk about the five car for Hendrick Motorsports. This course will be driven by 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's like a super speedway has not been really that great, but in the Daytona 500, he's had some pretty solid runs and some pretty solid finishes and nearly won the 2017 Daytona 500, was leading on the last set before he unfortunately ran out of gas. I expect Kyle Larson to be really, really quick. I expect the five car to be fast, and Kyle Larson will be a threat for sure to win the 2023 Daytona 500 if he's up front. I know his luck at super speedways has not been the greatest, but he's going to be a threat to win for sure. Up next, how about the six car for RFK? This will, of course, be driven by co-owner of the team, Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski came very close to winning the 2022 edition of the Daytona 500, but unfortunately on the last time, I think he ended up wrecking out, coming across the finish line as he was really close to winning it last year. Brad Keselowski also is really aggressive, caused multiple wrecks in the 2022 edition of the Daytona 500, but I do expect that Brad Keselowski will be quick. He's better at Talladega than Daytona, but he'll be very quick. I expect Brad Keselowski to for sure be a threat. In the 2023 Daytona 500, if he's up front. Up next, how about the seven car for Spire Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy also is going to compete in the Truck Series race at Daytona as well this weekend on Friday evening or Saturday, depending how the weather is. Corey LaJoy is a decent super speed racer. He nearly won the 2021 Daytona, uh, Daytona August race and almost won the 2022 Atlanta race, another track that is like a super speedway nowadays. I expect Corey LaJoy to be very, very quick. Spire Motorsports to give him a very strong car, and Corey LaJoy for sure will be a threat in 2023 Daytona 500 if he's in contention. Up next, how about the eight car for Richard Childress Racing? There's a new driver in the eight car in 2023, as Kyle Busch will drive the eight car in this year's Daytona 500. Kyle Busch, of course, was with Joe Gibbs Racing for the last 15 years, joins a new organization this year, had a really strong Bush like clash, finishing third, and coming back after getting spun by Joey Logano. Kyle Busch is going to be really strong and threat. He's going to, of course, will be competing his 18th Daytona 500. Tried to not compete in the 2015 Daytona 500. Be looking to be really, really quick with his new team. He'll be looking to win his first ever Daytona 500. He's won a Daytona before, but Kyle Busch looks to win with his new team in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the nine car for Hendrick Motorsports? This is once going to be driven by Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott is a driver who's ran really good at super speedways in the past. Last year got two wins on super speedway tracks, one in Atlanta, which is like I said, a super speedway like track, and one at the fall Talladega race. I expect Chase Elliott to be really, really quick in this 19 to be really, really fast, and I think Hendrick Motorsports is going to give Chase Elliott a really quick car. 
So I expect Chase Elliott to be really fast, and he'll be a threat to win the 2023 Daytona 500 if he's still in contention. Up next, how about the 10 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This is once going to be piloted by Eric Amarola. Eric Amarola has come very close to winning the Daytona 500 in the past. In 2018, was leading on the last lap down the backstretch, but unfortunately got turned by Austin Dillon. Then in 2022, came very close to winning. I think he finished in the top five in last year's Daytona 500. And has had some good runs on super speedway-like tracks in the past. I think Eric Amarola is going to be really, really quick. I think Stuart Haas Racing is going to give him a really fast car. And he'll for sure be a threat to win the 2023 Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This is once again be piloted by Denny Hamlin. Now, Denny Hamlin, of course, is a three-time Daytona 500 winner, one in 2016, one in 2019, and one in 2020. Denny Hamlin will be looking to win his fourth Daytona 500. He's, in my opinion, one of the greatest super speed racers we've ever seen in the history of NASCAR. And I think that experience that Denny Hamlin has and how good he is as a super speedway racer on the racetrack, I think it's going to play a role in helping Denny Hamlin have a good chance to win. I expect Denny Hamlin to be a threat, and I think he'll have a good chance to win the Daytona 500 this season. Up next, how about the 12th car for Team Penske? This is once again be piloted by Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney has been very, very close to winning the Daytona 500 in the past. In 2018, dominated the race, led 105 laps, but unfortunately was involved in a wreck, but still ended finishing in the top 10. Then in 2019, had a fast car, got turned there. 2020, lost in a photo finish. And in 2022, had a fast car, but unfortunately got put in the wall by his teammate, Austin Sinder. I think Ryan Blaney is going to have a really good chance to get it done if he's still in contention, and I think he'll be very, very fast in the 2023 edition of the Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 13 car for Colleg Racing? Yes, Colleg Racing is going to be entering three cars in this series Daytona 500. The third car will be an unchartered entry. It will be driven by Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith is a really talented driver who joins Colleg Racing in this in the NASCAR Xfinity Series series. He also runs this car in like other races in the Cup Series this upcoming season. Chandler Smith has to qualify his way in. He can qualify his way in tomorrow in the Daytona 500 qualifying, or we'll have to qualify in with the duels. With the call power and speed, he will have a chance for sure to make the field in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 14 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Chase Briscoe. A couple weeks ago, Chase Briscoe signed a multi-year contract extension with Stuart Haas Racing. Chase Briscoe actually, I believe, finished in the top 10 in last year's Daytona 500 compared to 2021, where he unfortunately crashed out. In 2022, did get a top 10 in the 500. I think Chase Briscoe's got a decent shot. He's not the greatest super speed racer in the world, but if he's in the contention, he could have a shot to get it done. SHR is probably going to give him quick equipment, and we'll see what Chase Briscoe can do in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 15 car for Rick Ware Racing? This will be driven by Riley Hurts, who will make his NASCAR Cup Series debut in this year's Daytona 500. Of course, he's got Sonny D on the car, and because of the KHI management with Sonny D sponsorship, it's a big reason why he's with this team. He'll also run all the Super Speed races with Rick Ware Racing as well. Riley Hurts has definitely got some potential. He's not the greatest driver in the world, but he's running all the Super Speed races and looks to have a really strong run in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 16 car for Colleg Racing? This will be driven by A.J. Allmendinger, who, of course, will be jumping back up to the NASCAR Cup Series on a full-time basis for the first time since 2018 and will be competing in his first Daytona 500 since the 2018 season when he drove for JTG Doherty Racing. A.J. did win the Xfinity Series Super Speed Race at Talladega last year in the fall, so he's got some experience on Super Speedways and Colleg Racing's Xfinity Series and Cup Series programs in Super Speedways have been very solid and really good. So I think AJ is going to be really, really fast, and I think he's going to give it its all in this series Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 17 car for RFK Racing? This will be piloted by Chris Busher. Chris Busher will be looking to have a better year than he did in 2022, though he did score victory at Bristol. And he did win one of the dual races last year, and RFK swept the dual races last year, Brad winning, I think, dual two, and Chris Busher winning dual number one. Chris Buescher looks to have a really strong Daytona 500 run and looks to win his first ever Daytona 500. And with the RFK machinery, he might have a chance at doing that. Up next, how about the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This one's going to be piloted by Martin Truex Jr. Now, this could be Martin Truex Jr.'s last Daytona 500, depending on if he decides to stay past 2023 or not. 
Mark Trick Jr. swept the stages last year in 2022 in Stage 1 and Stage 2, but unfortunately lost at the end of the race, I think after getting involved in one of the wrecks. Mark Trick Jr. is definitely going to have a really good shot of getting it done. Well, he's a pretty solid super speed racer, not the greatest, but if he's still in contention, he might have a chance to get it done, and I think Mark Trick Jr. will give it his best shot in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be piloted by Christopher Bell. Chris in 2022 had a breakout season, scoring three victories, two of them being clutch victories. And we're looking to win his first ever Super Speedway race and also looking to win his first ever Daytona 500. You know Jogas Racing is going to be one of these teams to work together very, very well. And I think Chris Bell definitely will have a good chance to get it done. Watch your Chris Bell because I think that Jogas Racing will give him a really fast car. I expect Chris Bell to be very fast in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 21 car for the Wood Brothers? This is once again be piloted by Harrison Burton. Now, Harrison Burton's 2022 season was nothing special, but in last year's Daytona 500, he had won the fastest cars before, unfortunately, getting turned by four teammate Brad Keselowski and going up in, in the air and unfortunately flipping over. I expect Harrison Burton to be pretty quick, and I expect that they're going to give him a very fast car in this year's Daytona 500. And he might get redemption after last year and might be for sure an underdog to win. This year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 22 car for Team Penske? This is being piloted by defending NASCAR Cup Series champion, two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, and also 2015 Daytona 500 winner, Joey Logano. Joey Logano is also really, really aggressive and is really strong on these super speedway tracks. So I expect that Joey Logano is going to be very quick in this year's Daytona 500. I think that they're going to give him a really fast piece. And I expect Team Penske to give him a really strong car in this year's Daytona 500. He's probably going to be really quick. He's going to be a strong contender. I think Joey Logano will have a very good shot and a good chance to win Daytona 500 once again. Up next, how about the 23 car for 2311 Racing? This will once again be piloted by Bubble Walls. Bubble Walls came very close to winning the Daytona 500 in 2022, if not for a nose basically kind of being messed up on the car and basically part of his car not being there and his fender kind of not being off. Bubble Walls might have won the 2022 edition of the Daytona 500. But Bubble Walls, the driver, expect to be very, very competitive in this year's Daytona 500. I think they're going to give him a really fast piece. 2311 always gives a fast piece for these races. And I expect Bubble Walls to be a threat. And I think he will be very strong in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports? This will once again be piloted by William Byron. Now, William Byron does have a win here at Daytona. This, of course, came in 2020 in this August race to basically clinch his way into the playoffs with that win. William Byron is a very solid super speed racer, and Hendrick Motorsports, I expect that they will probably give him a very solid and a very fast car in this year's Daytona 500. We'll see what he does, but I expect that William Byron will qualify up front and run well in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 31 car for Colleg Racing? This will once again be piloted by Justin Haley. Justin Haley is a very underrated driver, in my opinion, and also a really solid Super Speed Racer. He's won a lot of Super Speed Races in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, but as luck in the Cup Series, he actually does have a win here at Daytona, his first year Cup Series victory in 2019 at Daytona with the Spire Motorsports Group. College Racing, a team that I expect to give really good equipment out, and I think that you're going to see a very fast Justin Haley in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 34 car for Front Row Motorsports? This is once again being piloted by Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell, of course, a 2021 Daytona 500 winner and also a very good super speed racer in his own right. I expect that Michael McDowell and Front Row Motorsports are going to be very, very fast in this year's Daytona 500. I think Front Row will give them very good peace and be very strong, and I expect that Michael McDowell will for sure be a threat to win the 2023 edition of this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 36 car for Farmer Motorsports? Yes, Farmer Motorsports is going to be entering three cars in this year's Daytona 500, and Zane Smith is going to drive this 36 car. This car, obviously, of course, does have to qualify its way in the Daytona 500, as this car is an unchartered car. Zane Smith, though, I expect to be very solid in the truck series this season, but I also expect him to be very solid in the Daytona 500 if he's able to qualify his way in. Front row to do their part to get him in, and I think Zane Smith for sure has a really good chance to make this year's Daytona 500. 
Up next, how about the 38 car for Farmer Motorsports? This is once again be piloted by Todd Gillen. Now, Todd Gillen obviously will not run the full season this year, as five of the races that he was supposed to run full-time will be run by Zane Smith this season, but he'll drive the 38 car in this year's Daytona 500. Todd Gillen is a pretty good driver in his own right, and I expect that Todd Gillen will be very, very fast in this year's Daytona 500 if he's up there and in contention, which I do expect that Todd Gillen will be in contention in this year's Daytona 500. I expect him to be fast, and I think that Farmer will give him really strong equipment this year. Up next, how about the 41 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be piloted by Ryan Priest. Now, Ryan Priest obviously joining the team on a full-time basis for this season. I expect that Ryan Priest is a driver. He's had some decent runs in Daytona 500 in the past. For the whole season in general, I expect him to be pretty good in his own way. But he's a pretty solid and a good super speed racer, and I think he'll do a really good job in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 42 car for Legacy Butter Club? This will be piloted by Noah Grayson, who joins Legacy Motor Club in 2023, replacing Ty Dillon. Noah Grayson, of course, did make select starts in the NASCAR Cup Series last year, including in the 2022 edition of the Daytona 500, where Noah Grayson did end up basically crashing out due to Kyle Larson making a little bit of an over-aggressive mistake. I think that Noah Grayson is going to be very, very solid. He's a really good and aggressive racer, and I think that's going to play a role in helping Noah Grayson in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 43 car for Legacy Motor Club? This is once going to be piloted by Eric Jones. Eric Jones is a pretty good super speed racer, won his first career cup series race here at Daytona in the summer race in July of 2018. And he has become close to winning at Talladega a couple times, nearly swept both Talladega races in 2022. I think that he'll be very, very quick, very, very fast, and I think that Eric Jones will have a chance to win the 2023 Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 45 car for 2311 Racing? There's a new driver in the 45 car for this year's Daytona 500, as Ty Reddick will be piloting the 45 car in 2023. Ty Reddick's been hit or miss on super speedway tracks in the past, but with the help from Toyota for this year, I really do believe that he will have a really good shot and a really good chance to get it done in this year's Daytona 500. I think Reddick's got a really good chance, and we'll see if he's still in contention, if he can get it done in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 47 car for JTG Doherty Racing? This will once again be piloted by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in 2023. Say what you want to say about Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a really solid and a really good super spewer racer. So I think that Ricky will do a very good job in this year's Daytona 500 if he's still in contention. I know people make the jokes about Ricky Stenhouse, but I do think that he's a good super spewer racer, and I think he'll have a chance. He'll be an underdog to win this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports? This is once again be piloted by Alex Bowman in 2023. Now, Alex Bowman will have a new crew chief this year as Blake Harris is going to be the crew chief. Alex Bowman, of course, has been known for winning a lot of polls and in the last five years has started on the front row in the Daytona 500, which I think he's got a really good chance to extend that streak for starting on the front row in the Daytona 500. Like I said, this is a contract year for Alex Bowman, but I think he's got a really solid shot to get it done. If he's in contention, I think he's got a good chance to win the Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 50 car for the money team? This team, of course, is returning in 2023 in seven Cup Series races, and Connor Daly is going to drive in all seven of those Cup Series races with the team in 2023. Connor Dale, of course, will be attempting to qualify for the 500. This car, of course, does not have a charter going this year, so he'll have to qualify his way into the 2023 Atona 500. I do expect that Connor Daly's got a really good chance and a really good shot to get it done. He's got that Bit Nile sponsorship, and I think he'll play a role in helping him out to try to make the field. Up next, how about the 51 car for Rick Ware Racing? This will once again be piloted by Cody Ware. Cody Ware has ran multiple Daytona 500s, and last time we were at Daytona in the summer, he actually nearly won the race, and I believe finished in the top five. I think Cody Ware is going to be very solid and very fast in this year's Daytona 500. If he's still in contention, I think he's got a pretty good chance to get it done. So we'll see what happens. Cody Ware looks to have a really strong Daytona 500 this season. Up next, how about the 54 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? 
This will once again be will be basically a new driver driving this car. It'll be make attempting to make well, he'll be in his first Daytona 500, and that is Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs, of course, joins the Cup Series on a full time basis in 2023, taking over for Kyle Busch this season. I expect that Ty Gibbs will be somewhat competitive, and if Toyota can help the drivers from Toyota can help him out, they're going to do their part to probably help Ty Gibbs out. I expect Ty Gibbs to be pretty quick. Pretty competitive, and I think Ty Gibbs definitely has a decent shot to make it if he's not over aggressive and in over his head. Up next, how about the 62 car for Beard Motorsports? There's a new driver in the 62 car this year, as Austin Hill is going to drive a 62 car for Beard Motorsports in 2023 in six Cup Series races, including in this year's Daytona 500. Now, Hill, of course, will have to attempt to qualify for the Daytona 500, as Beard Motorsports is an unchartered organization. Lucky for them, their team has been really good at the races and also been solid in their qualifying runs. So I think Austin Hill's got a good chance to get it done and make the field. It would not shock or surprise me if tomorrow he makes it in from qualifying. Up next, how about the 67 car for 2311 Racing? 2311 Racing will have three cars in this year's Daytona 500, but this third car, which of course will be driven by Travis Pastrana, will have to qualify his way into the show. Travis Strong has already been getting a little bit of experience from this past week. He actually raced in a dirt feature and actually won a dirt race this past week. And will also compete in the Truck Series opener with Nice Motorsports as well. And I think that experience could really help him out. Travis Strong does have a chance and a decent shot to get in. And we'll see what he does on Thursday. If he make it in on Wednesday and qualifying, that'd be great. He has to race his way in and qualify his way in to the Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 77 car for Spire Motorsports? There's a new driver in a 77 car this year, as Ty Dillon is driving this car on a full-time basis this season. Ty Dillon will be working with the Spire Group, who's shown some decent pace on the Super Speedway tracks in the past. And I do think that experience will help Ty Dillon out quite a bit to try to make the show, which he's already in. But he'll be looking to have a really sharp run, and will be looking to win his first ever Cup Series race in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 78 car for Live Fast Motorsports? This car will be driven by B.J. McLeod in this year's Daytona 500. B.J. McLeod has quite a bit of Cup Series experience. In the last race at Daytona, he actually finished in the top 10, one of the few top 10s in the Cup Series that B.J. McLeod has had, though there was a lot of attrition in that race due to rain that NASCAR could have done a better job at calling. That being said, though, I think B.J. McLeod does have a pretty good chance to make the field, well, good chance to run, and we'll see what he can do in this year's Daytona 500. Up next, how about the 84 car for Legacy Motor Club? There's a new driver of Legacy Motor Club, and it's one of the owners, and that is Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson is going to drive in quite a few Cup Series races this year. He's already confirmed the Chicago Street Course race as well, but he has to qualify his way into the Daytona 500 first. Jimmy, I think, could win the pole for this year's Daytona 500. I expect Jimmy to be very, very fast, be very, very competitive, and I think you're going to see Legacy Motor Club give him a very fast piece, and I think there's a good chance tomorrow he does end up qualifying on the pole for this year's Daytona 500. And finally, driving the 99 car for Trackhouse Racing will be Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez, of course, who's a pretty decent super speed racer in his own right, in his own way. I think he will be very, very competitive for this year's Daytona 500. And you know that Trackus will probably give him a very fast piece, especially of how quick Chevy is. I think Daniel Suarez will be pretty competitive, and I think he's definitely having a really good chance and a really good shot to get it done. Watch for Suarez. I think he's going to be a driver to watch for in this year's Daytona 500. So... That is the official 2023 Daytona 500 entry list. I'm going to thank guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Notifications on to be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And support me on Patreon as well. Links are going below over that. And comment below your thoughts below on today's video. What are thoughts on the 2023 Daytona 500 entry list? Let me know in the comments below. Tell me you think he wins the poll. And tell me who you think will win the Daytona 500 in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we will have more videos, but of course, later today, we will have another video. We'll be looking at the Xfinity race picks, and also we'll probably have a live stream as well, and maybe looking at the paint schemes if those do get released tomorrow. A lot of content on the way, stay tone of 500 week, and I cannot wait to more, more content to come out this week. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.